Hi folks, welcome to the stream. Hi Aqua, Albert, Aviator, Pasha, Sylvia, Steven, Two Stevens, Moyer, Sadil, Amthurs, Missing Sky, Rob. Hi folks. That's all the names that popped up and it was frozen again. There's 300 comments there before you even start it. That's a good number. 300. 300. We took 300 people. Remember that movie? 300. We already stopped the massive army. That's what 300 people talking the truth could do to the nuclear industry. They could destroy it that quick. One big media carrying this story could destroy it that quick. A famous actor came out uh, yesterday. Coyote. P. Coyote, is it? I'll have to look up here in a second. Hang on, it checks the end. Hang on. 300. 300 people remember that movie? 300. There you go. Everything is good. See, I'm getting better at this. Only a minute and 10 seconds in. I got it all worked out. Hi, Kirsch. Uh, Kurt K, Pam, Toxic, Annabeck, Dub, excuse me, Marcus. Hi, Lori, Miss Frill, Mitchell, Stetson. Hi, Stetson. I don't say enough to you. Hi to you. I have to unblock you every night when you share me on Google, Stetson. I have to go in and unspam it so you show up. I'm putting everybody in the list and. Uh, as you know, the last couple of days, I'll just digress for a second. As you know, the last couple of days have been pretty taxing on me. Tonight was no different. And uh, I made a mistake two hours ago. I downloaded Firefox's new uh, version. Oh, just be so careful. Read everything before you try to uh, install it. That was unbelievable. I might even do a video tomorrow. I'm that upset. Hi, Ben. Spartans. The Spartans of Fukushima. Nah, it doesn't quite ring. The Hounds of Fukushima. I like that one. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Checks and balances, Sergeant. Yeah. Hi, Hi Annie Beck. Pete Coyote. That's right. Christopher. Hi, Chris. Uh, Barton. Mike. Kevin. Hi, Connie. Grandma. New the ways. Hey, I get to say hi to everybody tonight right away. See, I'm getting smarter. Maybe every night before I come on, I should, just a minute before I come on, I should say hi to folks, and that way everybody says hi. And while I'm waiting for the stream to sync up, if anybody's not familiar with this, it usually takes a couple of minutes, like you can see, to get the stream sorted out, get my head sorted out. I just went through two hours of hell. I've been through a day of hell because I've been licks, listening, licking Fukushima, I was going to say. Listening to Fukushima. <laughs> I don't recommend licking Fukushima. <laughs> hi, Reram. DC, Sergeant uh, Lurkter, 1540. I don't know what that one is. I can't pronounce the properly is all I'm saying. Hi, Terry. Make sure you're on the list. Okay. I know that. So, let me go down this path that I got first. And at the end of the government and the elite, I better bring down my screen. There's always snoring already. I don't know what was going on last night with her. That's my puppy, if anybody's not familiar. There we go, we got the comments there. So everything's coming in loud and clear. That's good to see. I'll make sure if there's anybody else I can say. Hi, Lunar. Uh, Gary. Uh, Datang. Datang. Selamat. Okay. You know, I've been listening to so much, so many different people, so much uh, material, reading so much, and I listen to everything two or three times. Uh, it's not enough, but you're trying to keep up with everything that's coming out. And when you're talking about hours, hour and a half, two hour lectures, and documentaries, and public speakings, and stuff like that, uh, it makes me happy to hear all that. I heard, a, I heard one tonight I didn't like at all. Let's see if I got it there. I didn't put it in my bookmark. It was a pro nuclear speaker just come out. Go to uh, search Fukushima on YouTube, search most recent, and then search uh, over 20 minutes, and you should find it. Um, you know, the way I'm starting to see this is they're so desperate at this stage that the NRC came out 
into the Senate hearing in Lloyd. By the way, hi NRC, I know you're here tonight. And I put out that video today about the NRC just because I had to get it off my, my mind because I can't move on sometimes if I don't do that. And my desk is full of folders of people I want to drop on their heads, literally, that turn my stomach, that make me nauseate, that really truly make me uh, worry. But all of a sudden, you know, this afternoon I had this epiphany that there's... There, I've said this before, I know, but it really struck home for me this afternoon that the system is so desperate. It's unbelievable desperate. And the reality of it is it can't even last uh, for five years now, the nuclear industry. It's finished. It truly is. But it's going to come down a lot faster than that. And there's nothing they can do about it. They can't come after us. There's thousands of us for every one of them. Uh, say if all the militaries were to turn on all the people on this planet not just one country but all the countries and try to control them they can't it's impossible they'll be destroyed look at ukraine push them a little bit too far they took the parliament they took the parliament with fire hoses and if you don't understand what that's all about on the end of a fire hose is a great big piece of brass and if you cut it off about six or seven or eight feet and you got the cops and the riot shields in front of you and you swing that over the shields and down on top of their backs and necks, they're done. They're done. One whack, down they go. And the fact is that if we come to that stage, the crowd behind us are going to be carrying guns. And we got a lot more guns than they do. They can't take us on. It's impossible. They haven't got a hope in hell. Yeah, they can get rid of me. Don't think they won't. They most likely will. That's the reality of putting your foot out like I'm doing every night. But that is the reality of the times we are in. If the future is to exist, then somebody has to take it. Somebody's going to take it. And most of us here will probably end up taking it. And what I mean by that is we'll be the victims. I would imagine most of us will be the willing victims. Because what's the sense of having the society they got worked out for us? you just seen the headlines today where there's going to be 70% more cancers. They're blaming it on sugar. It's the radiation that have invaded every aspect of everybody's life on this planet. Nobody can escape that. Their own children can't escape it. And the autoimmune diseases and the implications of ingesting this much radiation is not about going on your skin, okay? I know gammas and betas and alphas, a lot of these that are coming over here can't penetrate very far into your body. And I never ever said that was the issue. You will get it on your hands. Children will get it on their hands. And they'll put their hands in their eyes and in their mouth and they'll get it that way. They'll breathe it in anyway. Because they're re-liberating a lot of that stuff. Because it's not salutable. Because the fact that they sprayed salt water on the re-melted reactors. See, there's a word you won't hear out of these notes very often is melted reactors. Well, what, what a difficult thing to say, I know. But melted reactors. These are words that... Uh, the people in the media and everywhere else avoid, but they do say it sometimes, but they won't say it the next week for the next two months, and then they might say it again, but they won't say it again for another couple of months. But they'll only say it, and then they'll come out and try to marginalize it and point everybody at Building 4, which is a fable. And this fable can't stay alive. And that's what I'm saying tonight. The elites who should have spoke out, the celebrities that didn't speak out. Now, mind you, today is a different day because Pete Coyote which you might think is insignificant that a celebrity like that spoke out, but all the other celebrities now have to weigh what he said. All of the magazines and all the bootlicking lapdogs out there on the websites that do not even promote celebrity have to weigh whether they run that story or not. And the fact that he says it and says it so eloquently means that they have to take it uh, they just can't blow him off. They can't destroy his narrative. They, they can't uh, minimize what he'd done. Right? And so that's what I mean. That's now gone out into a whole different paradigm of people that were just like the football yesterday where they're, you know, the dummies that went and paid a 1000 or $2,000 or $25,000 for the front seats if they were lucky to get them that cheap. These people now have to consider... That because that's the world they live in too. 
And the fact that he came out and said that is extraordinary. That's the changing tide. And that's why I put the video the way I did the night. It's because the elites now understand this can't be held back anymore. And the more they try to bring a police state in, into focus, the less likely it is it can work. Because they're rushing it in. They're going overboard. They're trying to intimidate you by saying, always reminding you they're stealing your phone data, they're stealing your search data, they're stealing every, you're tracking, tracing, and databasing you everywhere you go and trading you like a hockey card is meant to intimidate you. Well, you're not intimidated. You're here. And people are not going to take it anymore. They just don't care. The system might think that they can gather up the troublemakers is what they're employing to their employees. Don't worry, we can gather up the troublemakers and deal with them through the NSA spying, through the, the Google stealing all your information, all the other... Uh, like the iPhone is extraordinary. If you jump up and down, it knows it. It knows when you're sleeping because it hears your snoring. It recognizes your breathing pattern even as long as it's in your room. Because the accelerometer, for instance, if you have a car crash, that could be used against you where your insurance company subpoenas your data of, of your, your, your telephone with all these gadgets in it, with all these um, sensors in it. And they can tell how fast you were going. They can do a blood test on you right on the phone by putting your finger on the phone for the, the phones that are coming with your finger locks in. And you think all of that is going to give them uh, the little edge it's not. It's useless information. It's meant to scare people and try to control people and try to make people scared and say people are out there looking at sites that are inappropriate, meant to keep them, you know, thinking and worrying that that could be used against them maybe. But see, the point is coming where none of that is going to matter to anybody. The cancer is coming real fast. Like you said today, 70% more cancer over the next number of years expected to show up, which is just probably 10% of what's really going to happen. Because when you ingested all this radioactive material, and like the video I got today for the NRC, shows the Americans' model of the dispersion of the 137 cesiums. And you got to remember, there's 30 times more strontium-90 with that. 30 times. 30 times because of the MOX fuel and the fuels they used in Fukushima. And remember, it just goes up into the jet stream, comes across the ocean in 48 hours, circumvents the entire northern hemisphere repeatedly in a 40-day uh, model, dispersion model. And the NRC said they had no, nobody had any models out there. That's absolutely desperation. Unbelievable. And that's an outright fabrication to the Senate and the Congress which is a criminal offense. That's a criminal offense. And when people realize over the next coming months, as they wake up, and they are waking up, because there's more and more like Peter, Pete Coyote, now that he spoke up, a whole lot of other people that are going to be start tweeting today, we're Facebooking today, that Pete is talking about Fukushima. We've seen We Are Change out to the football games last night to the bars, and he would ask people two questions on football and then ask them, about Fukushima and it was surprising how a couple of people actually knew quite a lot about Fukushima and he like he said he was shocked that people were truly were waking up it's just another indicator and the fact that they're coming out repeatedly now with lectures and everything else saying how you know we move forward this way we move forward that way and we learn these lessons about Fukushima no there is no lessons we learned the lesson. We learned the lesson that you're the extinction level now and that you're going to become extinct. And that we'll take you, just like Ukraine took its parliament, we'll take down our governments. Because that is what we're required to do under our Bill of Rights, under our constitutions, and under our Magna Carters, is to keep a watchful eye on our governments. That is our obligation. You are obligated to do that. You are not... You are criminally obligated to do that, whether you realize it or not. And in times of, of revolution, that still stands. The revolution is your constitutions, your Bill of Rights, and your Magna Carters. You are the power. They are scum. They have, um, how would you put it? 
they have uh, failed every task ever given to them, every responsibility ever given to our governments, they have failed it. They have destroyed our children and our communities. They have destroyed it by giving corporations human rights. That can't last any longer. They killed, you bring a corporation in your community, nothing else can survive. And corporate personhood is illegal. It's an illegal amendment to the slavery laws, to the amendment to the Constitution, and somehow gets used in every democratic country to come in and kill every mom and pop operation in every community. And so now every community is feeling the pinch. Every community doesn't even have people on the streets anymore because they're so poor. Every community is becoming dependent upon the system only because the stranglehold of a handful of corporations is destroying their opportunities and their way of life. The evolution of society is not a handful of corporations. It's not maintainable. I see a breakdown of society right now. I forecast it in my own mind repeatedly that this can't sustain itself here and there over the last number of years. And I have never been wrong. It's the same thing. And it wasn't that long ago I had forecast that we would see a revolution where the people truly did go in and take their parliament apart where the police could not contain them anymore. And that was Ukraine. And they have every right to do that. They just didn't go far enough. They should have left those fuckers hanging. That's the reality. Sorry about the language. But they should have left those people hanging. The next time that someone takes a parliament, and they will, and it won't be that long, because that radiation, as it comes into your coastline, is really going to be an issue. The plume is what I'm talking about. As the plume, the ocean keeps keeps so think about it this way if i had a big swimming pool and i took a five gallon bucket of dye and i had thousands of five gallon buckets of dyes how many buckets have i got to dip into that swimming pool before the swimming pool changes color even a little bit i haven't got to dip them all in have i fukushima is never going to stop and the numbers that they're telling you are insignificant numbers they're nowhere near true they're nowhere near accurate they're nowhere, they don't provide anything, see? They just say random shit. They don't mention all the water coming out under the reactors. They don't mention how the reactors have exploded and thrown hundreds of tons of rods. And once the rods have went through, of course, the chain reaction, they're extraordinarily more dangerous. They put out extraordinarily different types of radioactive isotopes that are nothing to do with bananas. Trust me, nothing to do with potassium-40. But that's the big lie, which we've covered repeatedly, and we always try to cover a little bit of this. But I truly see this now, that we, we don't fear them anymore. We can't. People have lost their fear of the system, and the system has run out of tricks. They can't do the false flags anymore. That doesn't work against us anymore. They can't stage terrorist events us against us anymore they've tried that doesn't work anymore it works on a little tiny scale but it doesn't actually work they have to come out and manipulate and lie to try to salvage each one of these attempts like the vietnam gulf of tonkin was a staged event that's admitted that they faked the story in order to get the american support to go in and mass murder vietnam cambodia i mean they sprayed toxic Deoxins over that country for nine years. There's three million children down there that are completely deformed. Because your taxes paid for all of that. And because these people are truly evil. And that was done by uh, Monsanto. Created these toxins. And they knew the entire time. And yet they still went and done that. And they got away with it, so to speak. But they can't do it anymore. They can't get away with it anymore. They got away with it because they tricked everybody. Like I see the fire hoses going to Fox News and CNN and MSNBC and beating them to fucking debt. I truly do. I see people in the near future can't take this anymore and have to eliminate it. In savages. Those people are savages that are doing it to us. They have lied to us so much. They have manipulated so much. They have tried to marginalize so much. They have no honor. They have no... 
They have no moral compass, period. Their job is to sell you the propaganda, and people understand that now. That's why their ratings are dead in the water. That's why they have to try to roll out Miley Cyrus, Cyrus uh, twerking nonsense to just drag people in with fluff at, in desperation. Football is junk. I mean, it just come out, they got, they're tax-free. They're under a charity. They're like a football club. How the hell is that even possible? That a football club doesn't pay taxes. That the system says, oh yeah, no, you're great because you distract people. We'll give you every break you ever wanted. They're garbage. The football uh, teams, the football industry itself is pathetic. It's pathetic. It's garbage. When someone like Pete Coyote comes out, I can guarantee you the repercussions for him coming out is never going to go away. You can't switch that off anymore. And so we're seeing changing times in this last few weeks in particular where the RNC is so desperate it's got to come out and say there's zero possibility of Fukushima ever showing up here in the last three years, which is ludicrous. We've covered a thousand headlines on this site how the plumes absolutely positively were found all over North America. And that's nothing. you got to realize how many headlines were buried, you know, in that first couple of weeks alone because of the tsunami. Everything got directed at the tsunami. But here it is three years later, the damage is nonstop, is still going on, is still hemorrhaging out of that ocean. And people all over the world now, are starting to wake up to Fukushima. People are talking about Fukushima in taxis, in laundromats. I was in a coffee shop a couple of days ago, I forgot to mention everybody, and there was three or four people sitting at a table. There was there was a bunch of people kept coming and going, and they were talking about Fukushima the whole time. And I don't know, you know, they weren't that accurate and everything, but it was the fact that they were having the conversations and that the people I talked to in this community of 25,000, it's very rare. Now, to talk to anybody that don't know what Fukushima is, that don't have a pretty good handle on it. That's a huge change from just a few months ago, believe me. Just in a couple of months, a community of 25,000 is waking up and are worried. It just takes, like you say, Berkeley went out and passed a resolution last month to start looking for radiation. And now we see another couple of communities doing the same thing. And as that starts to spread out, the game is over. Because people, their first reaction in the first couple of weeks is intense anger when they realize they've been hoodwinked. And distrust, of course. And like the UC Berkeley professor a couple of days ago, right, Vetter, comes out and says, well, if you're not going to trust who us at UC Berkeley, who are you going to trust? Who do you want to trust? Because there's a absolute distrust of scientists. And rightly so. 4,800 peer-reviewed academic studies that are published every day are locked away. And you paid for them. Your money paid for that. So how come you can't get access to it? What do you got to pay? And a lot of you can never get access to it. It's locked away in those ivory towers. They're all locked away. And you can only rent it. You can't even own it. Yet you paid for it. You paid for the professors. You paid for a thousand hours of students to work on that. The lights, the power, the equipment, the expendables. You paid for the institutions. Canada puts out $35 billion a year into universities. And it's all locked away. That can't sustain itself any longer either. And if we took 35 or 4,800 peer-reviewed academic studies that were published today and put them to work on solving some of these issues. Like how do we give everybody DCA? There's a link below about that. How it reduces all tumors by 70%. That's a pretty good start. That's, an, that's a sign of fate. Wouldn't it? That if they came out and put nutrition back into GMO foods, that wouldn't be, you know, that would be a good sign of fate. It still won't save them, but it'd be a sign of fate. They might actually get a pension out of it. As it stands now, there's not a government out there who's going to be able to, within a couple of years, will even consider that a pension exists anymore because the carnage from all the cancers is that coming. 
a lot of people don't realize you know they think like uh thunderfoot oh how come 90 million ain't dead yet i mean he knows better he's not stupid that's coming in fact like you say today the numbers are going up and of course they'll only come out with small numbers but cancer doesn't just get you you don't just get cancer overnight cancer can't work like that it doesn't work like that it takes a year or two or three years when you're talking about hot particles before it starts getting big enough to start causing serious issues and might take another year or two year but I mean there's around 14,000 to 20,000 people extra that died shortly after Fukushima which is was an abnormality in the statistics and that's covered we've covered that here before we you know there was a rash of baby deaths here in British Columbia what they blamed it on the iodine-131 but there was a massive amount of iodine-132 that travels with all of this and that for every one iodine-131 for every three that's created in the fission there's one iodine-129 which got a 15 million year half-life and all this stuff comes over it doesn't travel separately we didn't just get iodine we didn't just get cesium whenever you got cesium you got 30 times more strontium-90 which is an unbelievable beta emitter and it's it's longevity it's or its power its ability to put out uh, high numbers is frightening because when it was this stuff gets ingested into those what we call buckyballs and there's a link below about that it's a phenomenon of spraying salt water on the reactors and the sulfur creates these spherical shapes where you can ingest it ingest like particles uh, of and once again you know out of a gram you're talking about more grains of sands and all the beaches of radioactive particles and atoms and so if one of those radioactive atoms gets inside of the buckyballs they become like little nuclear engines and you will ingest that we know California had a count of over 1,500 per cubic meter of air. Think about that. You can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it, you can't feel it, you can't hear it. Well, that's a lie, actually. You'll taste like metal. You'll have a weird taste in your mouth from that. And what goes on is that it takes a few years for it to start building cancers. It takes another couple of years for you to recognize what's going on and then they give you treatment and now the treatment will finish you off and like the big media is saying today the world health organization which are monsters which are outright lawyers and fabricators and the globalists themselves the elites themselves all of those fuckers are going to be hunted down once again sorry i can't help it those people are not going to be getting away with this they need someone to blame the anger that's coming needs somewhere to go. And you can't direct that anger because it's focused on its own. You can't say, oh, no, it's not World Health never had nothing to do with it. When it's obvious, they hit it. They can't say Congress never had nothing to do with the fact that this information never come out because like today's video shows they know better. They got their own models. They got 3,900 employees and they can't find a model. Literally the stupidest people on the planet or just a nuclear pro lobbyist lobbyists shouldn't exist they're not supposed to exist they're not even the Constitution says they're not it's illegal it actually says you can hang them in the streets if they're convicted of being lobbyists well the old the old laws which never came off the books because a lobbyist only exists because corporations got human rights that they're not entitled to that they should never have that there's no reason for them to have and that by using that little law which is an amendment to the slavery law that shouldn't exist not the slavery law but the uh, corporate personhood but they can put their money in offshore accounts and don't pay any taxes in your communities or your country or your state or your provinces and so they use all that money to buy up acquisitions and buy up competition and they're too big to fail on top of that the bankers are going to get blamed Wall Street is going to be blamed. The cops are going to be running for their lives. And they're going to turn on them too. The cops are not going to turn on us. The military is not going to turn on us. If they do, it'll be a serious mistake. We got more guns than they do. They can't sustain the anger. It's okay to go down there into a foreign country 
right, where you're pretending you're at war, where you're raping and murdering and mass killing everything down there, you got five million orphans to get 11,000 Taliban. Are you proud? Do you think that was the right thing to do? Do you think that was worth it? Five million orphans? That's a pretty good price to pay. Not bad to get 11,000 Taliban that you never got. Is it? Two million widows to get 11,000 Taliban? Do you think that fable is actually going to stay alive? Much longer. You got 300,000 rapes in the military that we know about. That's if they're raping their own that much, what are they doing to the victims in the countries they're occupying where every building down there was shot with depleted uranium rounds where they fired 5.5 million bullets a month. 5 million bullets, rather, a month. Every month. And I put those headlines in videos I made before I started doing this a number of times. But you can look it up and you'll find it. Iraq, 5 million uh, rounds a month. Half of that came from McAllister's bomb manufacturing, and all they do is make depleted uranium rounds, uranium-238. It's totally illegal. It's completely against all the rules and regulations. This should never be happening. Their laws under the NRC says it's all going to be put away in man-made sarcophagus, and they still don't know how to make it. They're still trying to work that out. They're talking about Yukon Mountain because they don't know what to do with it. Instead, they can't keep dumping it in the ocean. They know that now because that's going to add to the killing of the ocean. And so they're going to stop that. they got no choice. they got to try to slow it down, see? And so that's why they're desperate to get Yuka Mountain up and why they're desperate for another war to distract you and to make you even more dependent upon them. That rah, rah, rah nationalism ain't going to work no more. You're turning on all the kids in all the schools. That's not going to work much longer. Just a matter of time before a couple of parents get together and start stringing these teachers up for treating the students, victimizing the students. The police are arresting children in schools, so they're not going to get any mercy. Ukraine didn't show them any mercy, I can guarantee you. When you push them too far, Ukraine, when they changed the law in Ukraine and said you can't protest no more, Ukraine took the parliament. And they made a mistake. They left these people alive. They should have threw them right off the friggin' belt and they right down onto the cement floors and, and uh, steps. That would have been the right moral, ethical thing to do with those people. They made a serious mistake by stopping. Should have murdered every fucking one of them. They don't deserve to live. They're the Billenberg Group. They're the elites. And they're trying to destroy that country and that way of life and that culture. They have no... They have nothing on their side. The police don't even... Can't even protect them anymore. And they know that. So they got rid of the law the next day. The president retired the next day. They get it, see? Anything to try to calm them down. You wouldn't have to retire if you had to throw them all over the balcony. You wouldn't have that song and dance anymore. And you'd have every other government on the planet paying attention forever to what the people says. Because that's coming everywhere. Saudi Arabia is going to get it. I can guarantee you. They can't control it. When people finally snap, they're finished. The Americans got 300 million handguns. 65,000 TSA. They're done. They're going to murder those fuckers right away. The NRC, they're dead. People are going to lose it on that 3,900 that work for those fuckers. They're scum. They're the biggest traders of human race. The human race, the animal, the biosphere, the oceans. They know better, and they hit it all. This can't be held back much longer. I'm saying it. I'm not... <coughs> I'm not uh, sugarcoating anything. I'm just saying the way it is. That's the way it really, truly is. That's really, truly what's happening. That's the, how, how I see things. There is no other way around this. I see that awakening everywhere. I can't possibly articulate everything I see every day, because that's what I do 24 hours a day, 7 days a week is lectures and reading and understanding. And I love nothing better than listening to nuclear lobbyists and pick out how they're doing it, what their lies are. Where most people can't stand to listen to them because they know they're lawyers. I want to hear them. I want to hear their spins. I want to know how they're doing it. I want to see what the regular routine is. And so we can destroy that and dissect it. Right? I can fill this filling up with bananas. 
You can't get cancer from potassium-40. I would have to eat 19 million bananas a second to get, to get the same amount of radiation as a single isotope from Fukushima. 19 million bananas in a second or ingest a hot particle. That's how big of a difference it actually is. And if I had a piece of, bana- of the rods from Fukushima this size, size of a banana, it would kill me before I finished that sentence. It would kill you before I could finish that sentence if you had it. And if you passed it to everybody and they passed it to somebody else, the neutrons from that and the radiation from that will kill you. It might take an hour or two hours or a day. If you're lucky, if you passed it real fast. But see, you get a lethal dose. And that can go right around the entire planet, pass it to everybody. You'll kill everybody on the planet. And they're lying, trying to marginalize the the reality of it. It just doesn't work anymore. And what it's going to do is, what I'm seeing here in this community, is people are really friggin' upset with their government. They want to go kill the government. That's their solution is go run them over. Can't say I disagree with them. Here in British Columbia, they turned off all the detectors. Five days after Health Canada, and there's a link below to that, where Health Canada went out and flew along for 19 hours, 18 hours rather, along the coastline, every 15 minutes took samples. And it was massive readings. And they never told anybody. All those kids walking to school that day. Their own family members out there that day. Their brothers, their sisters, their mothers, their aunts, their uncles, their cousins, their nephews, their nieces. They turn their backs on them all. They'll turn on them when they find out. Their own family is going to turn on these people. Not just us. Their own family will turn on them. They got nowhere to go. They got nowhere to hide. They're just as vulnerable as everybody else on this planet. And they've done it for a paycheck. And that is going to come back and haunt them. That is going to come back and beat them to death. That's the fact. Their own family will go after them for this. They can't avoid it. This is three years almost. Give it another two years and watch how many cancers shows up. The predictions were out today. It's going to increase by 70%. 70% more people now will get cancer. Gee, I wonder where all that's coming from. They're going to blame it on your sugar. That's where they're going to get a shot in the head. Because it's got nothing to do with the sugar. They can't keep the law alive much longer. They'll blame it on your cell phones. They'll blame it on your smart meters. Right? They'll blame it on the wireless and stuff like that. They can't hold it back, see? Because everybody's going to blame it on Fukushima. Even if it is your cell phones. Even if it is the GMO that they're going to blame it on. Everybody's going to blame it on Fukushima. Because all of that stuff is irrelevant to them when they hear about Fukushima, when they understand it, when they finally get a grip on it. They come across a video like this, they all get a grip on it. They can't hide away from that. You can't watch one of my videos and walk away. Unless you're a troll from the NRC itself. Or you're nuclear, you're pro-nuclear because you're making money off it. Then you can lie to yourself for a little while, but you won't tell that. You won't let your family member watch this video and try to argue with them. That's the whole point, see? They can't handle the truth. The truth destroys their narrative in a heartbeat. Like I say, I can swim in the ocean every day. The natural uranium in that has nothing to do with radioactive isotopes in Fukushima. I would have to drink uh, 19 million gallons of water in a second to get the same amount of radiation as a single isotope from Fukushima. Right? See how how their narrative is useless? Because it's potassium-40. And I've seen Ken Buesler uh, yesterday's where he explains how they get away with dumping everything into the ocean. Up to now, was they used the background radiation of drinking water and say that cesium-137 and uranium and all this other stuff is the equivalent at 90,000 becquels. Now, potassium-40 is equivalent to radioactive man-made nucleoids. That fantasy is getting torn down right away. It doesn't work no more. We got that worked out. We In the last three months, this site here, all the people sending me links, sharing me links. And I have to go out and read all that. I have to go out and watch all of that. And I don't care if it's pro or, or not pro. I'm going to watch it anyway. Because I'll learn something. I'll learn one of the lies or one of the, the trickeries that they're using. 
help work that through my mind over a few days and that gets incorporated into the narrative and slowly now and surely we got an extraordinarily strong narrative to destroy these people with already but it's getting much better now because everybody becomes articulate now and so the messages i'm getting are much more astute are much more to the point and some people want to live in the fantasies uh, those fantasies can't last much longer once again Mr. Coyote came out today, so that means all the celebrities have to read that. That means all the regs out there have to read that. And a lot of them will spin it and try to lie, but they won't tell their family. See? And their families will look it up, and then they won't trust them either. So it's not only a major distrust of scientists we see out there right now, not only a major trust of the government that we see out there now, but it's a major distrust from their own family members who know better who are learning the difference and can't avoid it because their friends talk about this their mates their people they work with will talk about this and that screws their narrative and their family has a hard time looking at them the nrc allison last night i mean she looked like she got banged by about 20 guys before she went there in congress and gave her she looked like debt she really did. Her face looks like death. Her skin color looks like death. Her hair looks like death. And what she done was she got there and said there was no models anywhere in the world about Fukushima plumes. It's the most ludicrous thing imaginable. The most desperate thing imaginable. The most unethical thing imaginable. The most horrific thing imaginable. These are the people that you put in, that you pay to do a job. They don't got power, they're there to do a job. But all of a sudden they think they got power. And that it's okay to lie to everybody. And that people are not going to get upset about that. Once again, this site needs a million people. We had a million people. I stomped them to death in about four days. I stomped the whole fucking system down in four days straight. They can't sustain a beating like I'll give them. You give me the numbers. You motivate me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'll spend 10 hours a day writing out the narratives to make sure I get it perfect for everybody and then we can bludgeon them. The narrative that I'm going to end up using in the near future is going to be directed directly at people that are trying to learn to educate them so that there's no way they can be beat in a conversation. There's no way they can be deceived in a lecture. There's no way they'll sit there and take it. There's no way they won't stand up and say, hey, that's a lie. That's an outright lie, and you know it, buddy. Potassium-40 got nothing to do with Fukushima, so why are you talking about it? Well, all we need is one student in one of the major institutions stand up and say that to one of the professors giving the lecture, the nonsense. If Ken Busler or Jay Cullen is giving a lecture and someone stands up and does it to him, they ain't got the balls to say that sentence at the next lecture. They have to lose that sentence. Because that terrorizes them. All of a sudden, it's no easy pass. Right? Helen Kellicott let him get off with it. Ken, Ken Busler, that's where I got that video from her symposium on Fukushima. He was invited. Woods Hole. And he's not a nuclear scientist. So why isn't Woods Hole sending out these dummies? Because they're useful idiots. They're willing to lie. They're willing to murder. Anything to keep a paycheck. Anything to keep their little fantasy alive for a little bit longer. Anything to be a mass murderer. And I see this revolution now so clear. I don't know. That's why I'm here every night, I guess. It's because I understand it. That they can't hold it back any longer. And my intentions are to drive it out there. With a decent narrative. Yeah, I go off the wing sometimes. Yeah, I snap sometimes. But that's only because that's what they drove us to. That's what they're driving everybody to. It's not just us. We're nothing. We're calmed down. We're calmed down compared to what's coming. We're, I'm telling you right now, what I hear in this community, I wouldn't, want, I wouldn't be able to interview most of those people and put it up there because they're crazy. <laughs> the things they say, I can't say it. I mean, they don't even hold it back. I hold it back. At least I hold it back. I'm just telling what I see and what I think. And that's my right to say. And nobody can take that away from me. 
You can kill me. I don't give a shit. You ain't going to stop me. You'll have to kill me to stop me. Because threatening me is not going to work. It's just going to make give me more energy. Trolling me is just... That just gives me energy. I've been doing this for eight years. I don't care about trolls. I really, truly don't. It gets under my skin sometimes, but it doesn't stop me. It doesn't slow me down. It doesn't make me change what I'm going to say. It doesn't influence me. It does not control me. It can't. It just drives me a little more determined each time. Every time I hear their lies, I put, you know, I, I feel good coming out. I have to. If a million people come out and slam the NRC today or tomorrow or the next day, and those days are coming for us, they're done. We drowned everything they have ever said out immediately in one day. We filled up everything with our narrative in one day. The whole planet wakes up at the one time. And they can't control that. They got an operation out there. It's called Operation Wildfire. And it's meant to stomp out dissent like we're doing here right now. It's meant to try to intimidate us and control us. It doesn't work anymore. Nobody has the fear anymore. We have the complete opposite. We have the question, why didn't you do your job? Why didn't you warn us? How come Russia evacuated 7,500 communities permanently in the 1940s, late 1940s, and our government thinks it's okay to let us live in a contaminated area? The people we put in charge. The people we pay to go and do the job to make sure that doesn't happen to us. You don't think there's going to be retribution for that one? You don't think that as people wakes up, they're not, they're not going to be looking for someone to get rid of? You don't think there's a lot of crazies out there that won't do it? You better guess again. You better think again. You can't hide from what you've done to us. You can't. It's not going to go away. You're increasing the rate of cancer. It's now saying it's going to increase by 70%, which is probably one-tenth of what it's going to be. But you got to come out and do that so people don't act surprised. And blame it on sugar. Shut up, you stupid insignificant worms. Your laws don't work no more. Your manipulation isn't working anymore. People are speaking out at an accelerated rate. You got to do the right thing. You got to put nutrition back into the GMO, but you got to get rid of Monsanto and Synentex. You got to get rid of those corporations. They got to be prosecuted. Corporate personhood has to go. Because if it doesn't, you all go. We're not going to attack each other. We're going to attack you. We're not that kind of society. We're not going to turn into the zombies. We're not going to turn into mass raping, and mass murder, and mass stealing at all. Nobody wants that. Nobody can. We're 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 living in a generation where that's not is not going to happen. It just can't happen. People want to have their life and go on. People want to have a society, and we're being denied that, and it can't last much longer. The elites now they're the targets too. They got nowhere to go. It's no good for them to go into bunkers if everything goes to shit anyway. It's too easy to get at them. It's no good for them to go up in the space. We'll knock them out of the skies. Every country out there got weapons can take them out. They got nowhere to hide. They can't live up there anyway. There's nowhere on this planet they can hide from us. And they don't realize it yet, but they're going to. They're not. They think they're okay. That everything will be fine, that the police state and the robots will be able to protect them in the future. They ain't got that long. They ain't got that long. They need another 20, 30 years for that artificial intelligence and equipment. But we control everything. We are the people. They expect us to turn on ourselves. Good luck. We're going to turn on them. That's the fact. It's useless to turn on ourselves because we, we can handle anybody turning on ourselves. They can't handle us turning on them. That's why they got to manipulate, try to manipulate. It doesn't work anymore. But to come out in Congress, in the Senate, and say that, for the NRC, to say there's no models, that's that's going to come back. That was the end of it yesterday when I seen that. I knew that was trouble right away. And as I thought about it, I realized, yeah, right. that's the most desperate thing imaginable. Ken Buesler equating everything with potassium-40. He's not going to last much longer. 
People are going to figure him out. People are going to confront him. And he's not going to be very nice about it. Because when people wake up to this in the next few months, especially because a Pete Coyote came out, you're going to see a lot of angry, a lot of angry people out there looking for revenge. And crazies. They want revenge. Not on you, but on them. And these people have never done their job. You don't think that information is not going to go out there? Good luck on it. Because that's what's going to happen. The 3,900 people who work for the NRA, you don't think their names and, and addresses are not going to get put all over the internet in the near future by the hackers who are angry? Forget about it. Because that's what's going to happen. There's going to be a hunt on for those fuckers. There is no police state that can hold down what's coming. I don't see that anywhere. You can't intimidate people anymore. We're in a society where people thought that if we gave the government everything they wanted, they'd get it right. We gave them everything they wanted and they stole everything else. And now it come to the point where they're going to come out and start admitting there's going to be a hell of a lot more cancers, 70% more cancers. That's just the tip of the iceberg of what's coming in the next two years or less. How the hell are they going to hold that back? I can't come up with a way to do it. I can't come up with an idea of how this is going to go any other way except turn on them. That's what we do every night. We turn on them. Because that's what we see. Right? That's exactly what we see. We know all the nuclear industries are not insurable, so they're privately funded. Those people are going to be sought out really fast. The wealthy have nowhere to hide. They're going to lose their freedom in, a, in an unimaginable ways. They lost it already. They're all out there hiring bodyguards. They're all out there trying to hide away. And as this rises up, there's a lot more smarter people than us out there that are going to flush them out. And then everybody's going to have a target that day, that week, until it's done. And then everybody's going to celebrate. The system is really, truly going to screw itself at this rate. And even if it did, got rid of all the, you know, put nutrition back into food and got the formaldehydes, the glossophates and the toxins out of the GMOs and started producing potassium, magnesium, iron, cobalt, calcium back into the food. What a novel idea, I know, because they took it all out. That would be an act of good faith, but it still won't save their ass. Not unless they get rid of the corporate personhood. That might save their ass. Because then society can kind of go back to being an industrialized nation. But as long as there's a corporate personhood, Walmart will kill every business in your town. McDonald's will kill every restaurant in your town. Tim Hortons will kill every coffee shop in your town. There's nothing left in your town. There's just stragglers hanging on, doing everything for dirt cheap, trying to stay alive. That's what's going on now. It's not going to last much longer, see? They've destroyed every community, every city by doing that to us. Then they take all the money, they, all the profits, and they put it in offshore accounts. And so the government has to cannibalize you. It has to tax you to debt. Because there's nobody making money in your communities. Nobody's paying taxes. That's why they're taxing the living daylights out of you so much. To keep themselves alive because the big corporations ain't paying any. Yeah, they kick back once in a while. But a corporation can't go to jail. A corporation can't get a conviction or a record. Right? They pay a fine. You go to jail. They pay a fine. And they don't even get a criminal record. Those days are long gone. They just don't know it. Society is going to come back. We're going to find out that we can live in a radiated world. We just got to change a number of things. Like putting nutrition back in your food so you can deal with it. By putting DCA, engineer DCA into your food. What a novel idea. Because we have the skill and technology to do something like that. Where we can deal with it so the cancers can't grow. And there's a link below if you don't know what I'm talking about. Look at it. DCA. And it reduces all tumors by 70%. But it's that kind of idea where... Because that has no patent. You don't need a, phar uh, a pharmaceutical prescription for it. And there's no money in cures. So that, that fantasy of doping up society was okay when everybody was uh, living on the mainstream media, but no one lives on mainstream media anymore. Attacking our children is not going to help 
uh, with what's going to happen because people are going to remember that and come looking for those people. The ones that are victimizing us are very soon about to become the victims in an unimaginable way. The anger that I see from all of this repeatedly now, particularly in comment sections out there on articles and videos, is getting louder. It's getting more violent. It's getting more stressed. It's getting more courage. It's getting way more bold. It's getting more directed. It's getting more articulate. The answers, the comments, the put downs of the pro nuclear are the pro nuclear are getting destroyed every time they open their mouth out there. Yeah, well, you know, I feel so much energy from what I've seen in the last couple of days. We're up at 55 minutes. I better watch what I'm doing because I'll be gone off into another hour. So we'll wind her down right here, right now. I know what I do to you all the time. But, like, I got a lot of energy, even though, um, you know, it takes so much energy to do what I'm doing. I get energy from it. Every time that I figure I can't do this for another second, one of these dummies will open their mouth, get me laughing, because I know I got them on something now. And I've done that so much in the last three months that I think I finally get this. You know, I truly do believe everything that I said here tonight, 100%, that their time of power is over. They just don't know it. We don't even realize it. But the signs are all there. The courage is all there. The ability is dear. We're thousands to every one of them. When we decide, and we will, that we're going to take it all back, we'll take it back. Ukraine just showed us the way. We'll take the fire hoses up first. We'll tear them apart. And if they want to use guns, we got lots of guns. We're not worried about them. If they want to raise the issue and try to demonize us, we know how to deal with that now. We're an educated society. We're an unusual society. This is the first time humanity, I shouldn't always say that word, I guess, because humanity, I don't think of it, I always think when I say the word man, why is there another word for, because it's people, right? There's there's so many genders out there. It's got nothing to do with about, because that was the way they kept you in the paradigm, by always, you know, the man on the moon, man this, man that. But the women run the world. They literally do. And thank goodness, you know, there's so many, there's so little bad women out there and there's so many good women out there that even their own wives will turn on them when they find out what they're up to. They hide all of this from their own wives. And I see that, you know, literally falls apart as because people are educated. They can put two and two together. We've been so lucky. And this has only been like eight years of mass education for everybody. So we'll say goodnight. Um, hi, Cats Alive. Aaron. Hi, Gavin. Hi, Gavin. You you keep getting marked as spam. I see your comments. And you say hi, Gavin. And I just... You know, I don't... I can't uncheck your... your, your um, when you're spammed, I can't uncheck it, but you always seem to show up spammed, but you usually only say one comment, it's like, good night, Dana, or hi, Dana. And I, I think that's so wrong, that people like you, in particular, who don't really do a lot of commenting, always get spammed. Yeah, I am reading you while I talk, Pam, yeah. Or Pippin. Char, thanks, Char. Hi, uh, Taz, Texas. TXA's ad? Gee. You have to watch the video. Uh, hi, Reram. Albert. Yeah, it's in a show of energy tonight. But I got that energy. You know, I was like, I couldn't wait to get online. Firefox screwed me up. Hi, Dub. Kurtz K. Michael. Sylvia. Just passing through. I better end it because I keep on talking if I don't stop. Hi, Paul. Mel Paul. John. Thank you, John. Always. So glad to see you. Connie. Grandma, Pippin, Cats Alive, Night Wave, Chris Burton, Sergeant, Sylvia, Annabeck, Night Rider, Amthurs, Kerry, Musgrave, thank you. We see um, we see uh, Stacy 
is out there. The two Stacys would be out there. Stacy Lane was the one I was just thinking of. And Stacy Anderson. Yeah, thumbs up, everybody. Come on. Thumbs up. I don't think I've had one night where I finished a video that I had a hundred up there. But close. And not that I mind that. I don't care. It doesn't mean that much to me. Um, the fact that people come and pay attention. The fact that people are trying to learn uh, are trying to educate themselves. That's more than enough me. Hi, Nuts for Art. Laurie. Um, there you go. The Monterey's. There you go. I give everybody a little hi. Once again, I'll be in and read all your comments. Stephen Meyer, thank you. And we'll call it a night on that. Aaron, thank you. Yeah. Uh, what can I say? You know, the uh, last couple of days, I know my energy level went down, but in the last couple of days, seeing all these people coming out with the biggest massive lies imaginable, some reason that made me feel better. Some reason that gave me comfort. Some reason that gave me a way forward that I didn't realize I had in me. Some way that energized me and reinvigorated a part of me that I didn't realize was important. But, you know, because I worry too, right? I really do. I worry about the things that I don't even talk about here, I know, because um, I don't like giving away certain stuff to the PR firms that are paying attention. Um, but I pay attention. And that's what I see. That's what I'm sharing. And that's the energy that I got now. It's a new type of energy. And I've been feeling it so much today. And I realized tonight that uh, that was the best thing that could ever happen was that I have that epiphany that they really truly can't, under any circumstances, control us because we are an educated society. And we have morals, we have ethics, and we have the righteousness of responsibility on our side. And we will rise to that challenge. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night, and we'll do it again. Take care, folks. I didn't sign out. Got to refresh your page. What's up with that one? That hasn't happened in like two weeks. <laughs> you wonder who's back. Look at now, i got to sign in the beautiful girl by Dana again. That's hilarious. That's okay, though. That was interesting. I'll go check into that one after. Take care, folks. We'll see you tomorrow night.